Albert Okwebenam is the Denver Broncos tight end one in 2022. Well, according to what he has had to say, he believes that he is the top guy and he is ready for an expanded role in this upcoming season. Plus, who are some of the forgotten defensive players that are on the Broncos roster currently and why should Broncos fans stop sleeping on Michael Ojemudia? You get that and much more in today's brand new episode, Locked on Broncos. You are locked on Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Broncos country? Happy Friday. Welcome into a brand new episode. Lockdown Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast here on the Lockdown NFL Network, your team every day from the South Stands to the end zone. I'm your host, as always, Cody Roark. Joined alongside by my co-host, Sarah Bettinger. Both of us, we cover the Denver Broncos for the Lockdown Network and 9 News. And Broncos country, thank you so much for making Lockdown Broncos your first listen of the day every single day. Free and available everywhere. You get your podcast in audio format or watching us here on YouTube. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Turn on notifications if you haven't done already so you never miss out on a day's worth of Denver Broncos news content and coverage all year long Sarah my friend hey it's great to see you happy Friday my man I hope you have a great Easter weekend alongside you and your family but there is one Easter basket that is out there right now for the Denver Broncos offense and apparently for tight end number one Albert Okwebunam he is in a position to secure the bag this upcoming season as he expands and expects to have a more prominent role In the Broncos offense with Russell Wilson. A much more prominent role after catching, you know, 30 passes for over 330 yards last season. Albert Okuebna, much to kind of my surprise. We've, on this show, I've taken a number of times, a number of opportunities, Cody, to say that I don't know if the Broncos should really make him just the de facto number one tight end, right? I mean, he had the ACL injury his rookie season, inconsistencies in terms of drops his first couple years in the NFL but the Broncos passed, um, you know, on the majority of free agent tight ends that I thought made some kind of sense to maybe bring in as not necessarily even starting competition for Albert O, but really keeping him firmly entrenched as the tight end too. It seems that the Denver Broncos now their official the official Twitter account put it out there, and and they did a little interview with him where he kind of talks about his expectations for this season. So it seems like it's official. The Broncos are moving forward with Albert O as tight end one for 2022. When you mentioned an interview he did with our good friend Phil Melania, DenverBroncos.com, and one thing that he mentioned is, you know, hey, coming in here, Coach Hackett said that I'm going to have an expanded role, so they're kind of giving me a little bit more than I've ever had in my career in terms of what they're going to do with me on the football field. Now, I think there's no question about it, too. When we look at Albert Okwebunam here, sir, he has all the traits, I think, to be a special talent. I go back to one play last year, Teddy Bridgewater. This was against the Eagles where Teddy threw it across the middle of the field. He caught it, and then he ran for 66 yards after the catch there. Unfortunately, got caught within the 10-yard line. But you know what? It's like, hey, that was a big-time play where the Broncos finally attacked more than four yards downfield to their tight ends. And now for Russell Wilson, as we know historically has loved to target tight ends between the 10 to 15 yard range. And then with the guys like Cortland Sutton and Tim Patrick, you can attack downfield with them, Jerry Judy, KJ Hamler, but even you can go downfield with a guy like Albert Okuebunam. And, and I think that's what the Broncos role is. He's not necessarily going to be just an inline guy. He, they're going to plan to move him inside the slot. They're going to plan to move him on the outside. And, you know, it's a new coaching staff that's embracing this that seemingly Pat Shermer could not figure out how to do. Right. And I think that one of the best attributes that Albert Okuebanon brings to the table, a lot of things that I'm seeing and hearing on Twitter and uh, in other places where kind of the discourse on Albert O is happening is that it doesn't really matter who the tight end is because Russell Wilson doesn't historically target the middle of the field. So if that ends up being the case with the Denver Broncos, which I get, I think that's laughable as well, Cody. I mean, it's like, he's not going to use the middle of the field. Come on. But let's say he doesn't utilize it a lot. Albert. O, one of the best traits that he had coming out of Missouri was his ball control by the sidelines. And I think a great example of that are a couple of his first, you know, first few touchdowns in the NFL. He, you know, remember the, remember the first touchdown that he caught in the back of the end zone against the chargers, where he got a he got a cheek in in the back, yep. right? Uh, and then this past season, uh, one of his touchdowns that he caught on a fourth down play, where he really utilized every inch of the sideline to reach the ball over the pylon. 
his frame is massive, but that doesn't mean that he can't get small where he has to. He was a magician at Missouri, getting his feet in bounds, being a red zone target near the boundary, being a vertical threat near the boundary. I think the sky's the limit for Albert O as a, as a playmaker, and I have since before the Broncos even drafted him. But at the same time, I think it's fair to be skeptical about whether or not he can take that next step. It looks like the Broncos are going to bank on that potential being being realized in 2022. Well, there's some other uh, interesting tidbits that came out of that interview, too, where he says, Albert O says the biggest difference between Russ is the level of respect that comes from his wisdom and the fact that he's won a championship. So when he says something, it means a lot more than maybe some of the other guys that they've had to listen to. He knows what it takes. He knows what it looks like. And obviously for the tight end, it's a big-time role. If we go back to the Green Bay Packers and saw how Robert Tunyon was used in, with Aaron Rodgers in Green Bay, Albert O is excited about his ability to create mismatches, as we've talked about, what Pat Shermer couldn't do. And he knows that the coaches are going to expect exploit his ability to create mismatches and the game is slowing down for him which is good because ideally it takes a couple of years if, especially for tight ends like that was something we preached when Noah Fant was on the roster like hey it's not just going to be perfect year one or not even year two year three you really hope that they can take that next step the game slows down they start to understand a little bit more but even what's more interesting too and I'll end it on this note here Sarah says Russ already knows the new language and terminology of Nathaniel Hackett's offense like these guys have been working together and the offensive guys have all been working together and they've been getting up to speed together led by Nathaniel Hackett led by Russell Wilson this is huge for the Broncos and it gives them such a tremendous advantage heading into this offseason so with that said as we're all excited for the offensive side of the ball what about the defensive side of the ball folks who are some players on the Broncos defensive side of the ball the skill player position that are seemingly forgotten on the Broncos' current 67-man roster as is today. Well, we're going to dive into that and much more coming up here in just a moment. But before we do that, let me tell you about BetOnline.net, the sponsor. Today's episode, Lockdown Broncos, BetOnline.net is your number one source for all your sports betting needs and information this upcoming season. You can find all the latest sports developments, league reviews, and news, including this year's basketball playoffs, which begin on Saturday and the start of the Major League Baseball season. BetOnline is your continued source for all your sport wagering information from live betting to playoffs, esports, and more. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and the action. BetOnline, where the game starts. And once again, Broncos country, thank you so much for making Lockdown Broncos your first listen of the day every single day. Now for a big announcement, starting on Thursday, April 28th, you can tune into Locked On NFL Draft's live coverage of the 2022 NFL Draft with all three days of real-time analysis from our extensive lineup of experts and insiders. And for those of you who are dying to know who your team will take, catch Odyssey and Locked On's NFL Mock Draft special hosted by Brian Peacock and former scout Matt Williamson of the Peacock and Williamson NFL Show all week long leading up to the first pick. Where can you find it? Well, the Locked On NFL Draft Live on the Locked On NFL Draft YouTube page, the Odyssey NFL Mock Draft on Odyssey and Locked On NFL Draft podcast feeds. When does this happen? Well, the Locked On NFL Draft Live is a three-day event beginning April 28th, 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time, April 29th and 30th at 6.30 p.m. and then April 30th at 11.30 a.m. Eastern Time plus the Odyssey NFL Mock Draft April 18th through the 22nd and 25th here on the Locked On Podcast Network. There, you know, one thing we were doing this week early on the show, we were talking about some of the forgotten offensive players on this Denver Broncos team. Well, now I was like, hey, let's flip the script. Let's look at some of the forgotten defensive players that not many people seem to talk about enough going into this offseason, especially when we lead up to the NFL draft. Everyone's like, hey, they need this position. They need this position. Let's start off with defensive back here. And look, I think Michael Ojemudi is probably one of those guys that does get forgotten about a little bit by fans and by media. Obviously, with the offseason addition of Kwan Williams, he's more than likely going to play that nickel role. That was the expectation when they signed him. You have Darby on the outside, Patrick Sertan the second. So it's like, where does he fit in there? In the dime and the nickel specifically, we can see him play a lot more. But even more exclusively, what I imagine here for Michael Ojemudi, if the Broncos want to get really creative and if they ever need to move Patrick Sertan on the inside to cover one of the opposing team's best wide receivers and they need an all-exclusive DB package, well, that's where you could put Michael Ojemudi on the outside, Sarah. What did we see from him in the Week 17, Week 18 regular season finale against the Kansas City Chiefs? He had 11 tackles and two passes defense. He should have had two interceptions, but he was all over the place, and he looked so damn good breaking on the football and making plays. Unfortunately, that was the only action we got to see from him in 2021 because he got injured in the preseason. Well, it was really unfortunate, too, because there was some shuffling at the cornerback position for the Broncos, right? And he would have gotten an opportunity to go out there and and show what he can do, you know, starting opposite 
Patrick Sertan or at least playing in tandem with those guys like you mentioned. So I, I wish we would have gotten to see a bigger sample size. I just don't know where's the front office at with Michael Ojemudia. I think the potential's there, and I'm certainly not betting against a Hawkeye, Cody. So I would love to see him get some attention in that specific kind of a package like you're mentioning. And you know what? He's got two years left on his rookie deal. I don't necessarily know that you would pass on guys in the draft like we talked about in a previous episode, all the different options with the Broncos' top three picks that I think could be available. I don't know if you necessarily pass on a guy that you really love because of Michael Ojemudia, but if you like another position a little bit better, maybe you say, hey, we got Ojemudia on the team already, and we've seen what he can do a little bit. Let's take this other guy at a different position and move forward with Ojemudia. So I think that there's potential that that's how they could view kind of his future with the team leading up to this draft. Well, what about another guy too? He's kind of plays that hybrid role, defensive end, outside linebacker, can play inside linebacker. And I've been guilty of it myself, sometimes forgetting about the Broncos edge rusher depth. Jonathan Cooper, who stepped up in such a big time way last year for this team. I know we focused on edge rusher a little bit early on here in this week, especially with the news of Malik Reed re-signing on a one-year deal, returning after signing his tender. Jonathan Cooper is just one of those guys I feel like I'm excited to see what Dom Capers, you know, advice would be for Ejiro Evero to be able to come in and say, hey, how can you utilize this guy here that has a high motor? I mean, obviously for a seventh round pick of George Payton, George Payton's going to want to have that input to say, hey, this guy played well for us last year. We need to find a way to utilize him. Even if we have Bradley Chubb, even if we have Baron Browning and Randy Gregory, we need to find a way to utilize him. And I would not be surprised we see him rotate to kind of maybe having his hands in the dirt this upcoming season for the Broncos defense. I wouldn't be surprised by that either. I mean, you've got to find a way to get your best guys out on the field one way or another, right? And it can't just be when they get injured. I think that was one thing that with Vic Fangio, there wasn't a ton of rotation unless it was a necessity based on injury. So I would love to see more of a rotation. And I think Jonathan Cooper definitely deserves to be in there. You know, he showed as a seventh round pick last year that the Broncos way out kicked their coverage on that pick. I mean, he was a steal where they got him. So now the pressure's on, though. Now there are some expectations. Last year, there was virtually none because you're a seventh-round pick with a with a nice athletic score, relative athletic score. You come into training camp, you make some noise. Now he's put some things out there that it's kind of like, all right, you got some expectations. But there are a couple guys, Cody, that I think that the expectation level from the fans is extremely low at this point because we do have Randy Gregory, Bradley Chubb, Jonathan Cooper, Malik Reed, Baron Browning moving to the edge. I think two other guys at that edge position get a little bit overlooked and that's Aaron Patrick uh, and, and that's Andre Mintz. We talked about them a little bit briefly in that edge rusher episode, but those are two guys that, man, they, they blew the charts off in terms of their athletic scores. I'm looking at Aaron Patrick's right now, six foot five, 247 ran a 453 in the 40 yard dash 39 inch vertical uh, over 10 foot broad jump so this guy I mean this guy is a freak of nature athletically and you just wonder I mean what could a new defensive coordinator do with that kind of a talent can he move any of these guys potentially? Like you talk about those athletic traits, could they rotate them at inside backer, you know, as well? Like we've seen some hybrid transition models here in the NFL lately from some NFL teams where an outside linebacker can play inside linebacker for them too. Like it's those interchangeable roles. And it's very interesting because that's really where defenses have kind of evolved to. And if you have some pretty good pass rusher depth with right now, I think Denver's edge depth is pretty strong. I think it's pretty solid. I wouldn't be surprised if they add some more and maybe upgrade as, you know, as some of the back end depth there. But I mean, these guys as well, they also have a tie into maybe turning the eyes and the heads of the, you know, this new coaching staff. It's a brand new position coach here for outside linebackers and pretty much for every defensive position outside of Christian Parker. Everyone is new on this defensive coaching staff. So everyone's coming in with a fresh eye to be able to observe these guys in OTAs and mini camp, you know, and then once we get the training camp and you get the pads thrown on a little bit, that's when really evaluation begins. You know, you can't do much within the contact period. You can't really evaluate guys. You can see how explosive they are. But I think for the most part, what happens when you throw the pads on? That's going to be key, and not to mention preseason, week one. That's going to be something for the Denver Broncos and this coaching staff specifically to look at when it comes to guys like Andre Mintz, again, who had a really good camp last year, Aaron Patrick, Jonathan Cooper. I mean, obviously, we know Coop's going to have an elevated role in the 53. But like for guys like Aaron Patrick and Andre Mintz, these guys are fighting for you know practice squad spot or maybe one spot on the depth chart on the active roster. 
I wouldn't be surprised if both these guys made it and one of them made it on the active, one of them made it on the practice squad here. But these are some players that are often forgot about on the Broncos defensive side of the ball from a skill player position. But you know what, sir? We got to show the big guys some love too. What about defensive linemen and linebackers? Well, we're going to get that coming up here in just a moment. But before we do that, folks, let me tell you about Built Bar. And Built Bar is the sponsor of today's episode, Lockdown Broncos, and your favorite podcasting providers and YouTube. Now, for Built Bar, it's the best tasting protein bar that is out there on the market today. They have nine amazing original flavors, plus the occasional limited time flavors like the Built Puffs, the Banana Cream Puffs, the Churro Puffs, the Brownie Batter Puffs. Be sure to check out the wide assortment of flavors at Built.com here today. And if you need a little bit extra fuel to get yourself through your day, you need a little bit of kick in the pants with a little bit of dessert taste behind it, well, guess what? Built Bar has you covered because the bar are covered in 100% milk chocolate and each bar contains 17 grams of protein 130 calories and only 4 grams of sugar so I want you to go to built.com right here right now and find a flavor for you and your family here on this Easter weekend and when you go to check out make sure you use promo code LOCKED15 that's going to get you 15% off your next order at built.com as we jump into the fourth quarter action on today's episode of Lockdown Broncos, once again, Broncos Country, hope you have an amazing weekend this weekend with your family, with your loved ones here on Easter weekend. Outside of that, thank you so much for making Lockdown Broncos your first listen of the day, whether it's with your morning cup of coffee, while you're making breakfast, while you're driving to work, or while you're at the gym. We appreciate you taking time out of your day to listen or to watch us here talk all things Denver Broncos football. This is the place to be if you are a fan that wants objective coverage and looks at every angle. This is the place for you to be locked on Broncos. All right, sir. Talking about some more forgotten players on the Broncos defensive side of the ball. Right now, as it stands, the Broncos roster is at 67 players out of 90. And it's going to fill out a little bit, imagining how the NFL draft goes. And then there will be invites, obviously, the undrafted rookie free agents that get brought in. So depending on how this draft class goes for the Broncos, Denver could still make some more roster moves beforehand or even after the NFL draft based on what happens and how the board falls for them. But there's some players that are already on this roster that I think have not been talked about enough. Now, one of these guys, we had high expectations for last season initially because of all the buzz and all the all the hoopla that he was creating out of training camp and the preseason, and that's Sosa, like McTelvin Aguim. Like for him, he's one of those guys that we were hearing so much about, and unfortunately, like on that game day active roster throughout 2021, he was a DNP by a coach's decision, not on the active roster. And then the times he were activated, you could see the impact that he could potentially have here. It's going to be a big year for McTelvin Aguim, in my opinion, here for this Broncos football team. I can see it happening, Cody. And you just reminded me, I mean, the, the SpongeBob scene where the one little fish is shouting hoopla and they have to go shut him up. I haven't heard hoopla, <laughs> I think, since I last saw that episode of the show. So that was a great usage of the word hoopla. But I, I'm in. McTelvin Aguim, I, that this is a guy that I think you have to maybe press a little bit this year. It's kind of a make or break off season for him, isn't it? It's a new coaching staff, a new regime. Yeah. He was drafted by John Elway. So it's not only a new coaching staff, but George Payton didn't even draft him. So it's going to be very interesting to see how he's approached in terms of how the front office approaches him and the pro scouting department and those types of things. Would the Broncos go out and get somebody like an Akeem Hicks if the price is right in free agency and really just replace him on the roster? I don't know. I think we saw enough good things from him last year and there was enough good things said about him last year that man, I really hope that he can contribute this year, but he is forgotten because I, I've got a lot of people jumping into my Twitter mentions talking about how the Broncos desperately need a defensive lineman. But if that's the case, what is to happen with McTelvin Aguim? I mean, would he even be on the roster if they draft somebody and sign somebody, or even if they just draft somebody, would he even be on the roster by, by the time all is said and done? I think that's the that's the area where he becomes in this category of being a forgotten player and he's got some skills, man. He's a former edge turned interior lineman. So he's got versatility. He can go inside or outside and he can do a lot of different things for you. And we know he's quick. We know he's quick off the ball. So it's just a matter of our, is everything coming together for him on the field in terms of just the way that he approaches things mentally, his physical skills catching up to his, you know, understanding of the defense, all that is going to factor in. But I think, man, if he could take that next step in 2022, how huge that would be for the Denver Broncos defense. 
No, oh, spot on there, especially with Draymond Jones and even the addition of DJ Jones on the defensive line. The Broncos have options, not to mention George Payton drafted Marquis Spencer in the seventh round of last year. Maybe one of those other players that doesn't get talked about enough. But then again, we don't know enough about Marquis Spencer at this point to really have like, hey, you know, he's better than McTelvin Aguim. I think those guys will probably compete at training camp for a roster spot here. But, you know, a couple other guys, too. We talk about linebacker, and I know a lot of Broncos fans are like, ah, oh, linebackers are a huge need for this football team. But they do have some other linebackers on the roster outside of just your Josie Jules, your Baron Brownings, your Jonas Griffiths. They do have Justin Sternod, obviously, who is also drafted by John Elway, a guy out of Wake Forest. And, you know, for Sternod, I'm a bi- I've been a big fan, a big supporter of Justin Sternod. I think there's things in his game that make him, I think, a solid football player that could be a rotational guy here for this Broncos defense. Maybe not necessarily a starter yet. I don't think he's starter ready yet, but he can be a key special team starter immediately right now. Not to mention, he can also be one of those guys that when you would need to come in on run-stopping situations, I think he can be there. He's athletic, but for him, when he got thrust into a starting role last year for the Broncos, he kind of struggled in some aspects, especially with some run fits, uh, You know, missed some open field. Guys got lucky a couple times in terms of coverage against running backs, but those are growing moments for him, and obviously for him in a position that he's in, he, he's also seeing that same kind of pressure that a guy like Matelvin Aguim is, was not drafted by George Payton, so... Everyone is looking at what he decides to do here and how he maybe maneuvers this offseason. There's he and Barrington Wade, another linebacker that the Broncos have. I mean, Denver's got a lot of guys on this roster right now, sir. They do, they do, and still plenty more spots to come. Like you mentioned, only 67 active roster spots filled. So by my math, that leaves 23 guys that they can add between the draft and other free agents, and then they could make you know maneuver around other ways. But I like what you said about Sernod. You know, it's it's important not to give up on a guy's potential just because you didn't draft him. Like we see that all the time. We're hearing rumors yeah. of like the Jaguars are thinking about trading Lavisca Chenault, and it's like, well, why would you do that? Your wide receiver position stinks, and he's a talented player. That just it doesn't make sense to me. Just because you didn't draft a guy, or just because a coach, a previous coaching staff liked him, doesn't mean they can't be good for you. So I think Sternod. We have to remember, last year was effectively his rookie season, right? So he deserves the opportunity, just like every other rookie, you know, quote unquote, to to take their lumps out there on the field and to make those mistakes. And he got the opportunity to go out there and do that. Hopefully it didn't crush his confidence or anything like that. I'm sure it didn't. But, you know, that's the that's the one thing I think we need to see is how do you come back from really struggling and getting replaced rather quickly? Like the Broncos went out and made moves to to get him out of the lineup pretty quick so and then Barrington Wade can you be a special teams ace because that's how he's going to make this team and and I think that you know that's exactly what these two guys need to do they need to prove to the to the new coaching staff to Dwayne Stukes the new special teams coordinator you can't cut me because I'm going to be one of your best special teams players and I think with the linebacker depth the Broncos currently have Cody I feel like those two guys could both make the the final roster ultimately if they prove themselves worthy in that phase of the game what do you think down below broncos country let sarah bettinger and myself know what you thought of this episode here today who are some forgotten players maybe on the broncos defense that we may or may not have mentioned outside of that share us your thoughts as well on whether or not you believe albert okwaygudam will be tied in one here for the broncos in 2022 that will wrap up today's episode of the show broncos country thank you so much for tuning in today making us your first listen of the day every single day enjoy the rest of the weekend with your family i know sarah bettinger and myself we're gonna do the same exact thing with our families and we will see you on Monday for a brand new episode, Lock on Broncos.